to transition towards a far more equitable, just, and harmonious form of post-carbon civilization. Civilizations have risen and fallen throughout human history. So in that sense, what we're facing is nothing new to human experience. Although what is new is for the first time, we have a truly global civilization, and we've been able to interfere with, with the Earth in ways that previous civilizations haven't interfered with. So of course, the potential impacts are magnified. But, in that, but, you know, but that's, and that, and that's something we need to be aware of. And that could obviously magnify and exacerbate certain problems. <coughs> But, you know, you know, civilizations have risen for the price for very similar reasons sometimes. So, I think that our global predicament does justify us looking forward um, and kind of looking forward as long-term optimists. The technologies, the ideas, the values for an effective civilizational transition do exist. There's many, many scientific reports, there's activist movements, there's practical grassroots, actual real-life models that have actually been created now, currently working, here in Britain as well as around the world, which we can talk about in the Q&A, which illustrates that this transition is currently underway, even if it's a bit haphazard and kind of, you know, not really getting the support that it needs. But obviously, if we're going to do this, you know, we, we need to collectively rethink our entire, um, our entire approach to our understanding of the natural order, our understanding of our values, our understanding of, of the way politics and economics should be done. So there are clear signs that the current order, the current model isn't working. And generating an alternative from the ground up is no longer really an option. It's pretty much a necessity for the survival of our species, if not the survival of the planet. Thank you very much. So uh, let's hope if anyone has some questions, we maybe have a, um, a few moments.